Hi there, I'm Clarice and I am curing meat today. I'm making biltong. It's a traditional South African way of curing meat and it has its roots in the outdoors. And people have been doing this for hundreds of years in order to preserve meat in the outdoors so that they can carry it with them. And it's something that you can do on your next trip into the wilderness as well. Stick around and I'll share my recipe with you. So when you need to preserve meat, what you can do is use vinegar and um, salt have been used before. Um, and in Africa, I know in, in Tanzania, there is a group of people called the Hadza. Um, and they speak Hadzane and what they do is they still cure meat, but they don't actually use all of the things that I'm going to use now. Well, they actually just dry it um, out in the open air. And what that does is it preserves it just a little bit so that they can actually carry it with them and keep it and eat it over a couple of days. Granted, they have really arid um, conditions there. Their temperatures are really actually quite warm. Um, they don't have a lot of moisture. They don't get a lot of rain, which is different from where I am in the Western Cape, especially in winter as we have now, even though we have a beautifully sunny day. We get a lot of rain in winter here. So then it's cold and it's wet. And I'm sure some of the people watching from abroad can relate to those sort of temperatures. And it poses a challenge for curing meat in the open air. So we have to be a little bit creative in that way. Traditionally, biltong has actually been made, um, I think it was started in the 1700s when the fur trackers started moving from um, the Cape to um, the upper northern parts of South Africa and what we call the Groot Prak. Um, or in, in other words, the, the big move, if you translate it directly. And what they did was they had ox wagons and they needed to transport meat with them for long distances and over long periods of time. And in order to preserve it, they used vinegar. And the vinegar helps to create an acidic environment around the meat or all over the meat. And that acidity actually kills off bacteria. Now, what I've got here, I've got two different kinds of meat. I've got a bit of kudu on my right hand and I've got in this white bowl, I've got some beef. You want a nice piece of fat on it, like this piece over here has, because the fat is tasty. The cut that you want needs to be a longitudinal cut. Um, it needs to be cut with the grain of the meat, not against it. The reason why is once our biltong is made and because that meat is cured relatively hard, you want to be able to cut across the grain of the meat um, or against the grain of the meat so that you can then easily um, eat it and it is a little bit less chewy that way. You can use a whole variety of meats. Springbok can be made into biltong. I've got kudu here. Ostrich biltong can be made. I've even seen chicken biltong, but chicken's not really meat. It's more a vegetable, so we're not going to go there right now. And then we're also going to add salt. And I've got a couple of spices here. I've got a bit of um, chili flakes, and I've got some roughly ground coriander and roughly ground black pepper. If you have access to it, you can use something like safari biltong spice and the biltong enthusiasts out there will tell you this is great stuff to use. So if you're out in the wild, you can use anything that is going to be acidic and create that acidic environment. Um, and I'm using brown grape vinegar. If you only have salt with you and you are in the wilderness or you're bugging out somewhere and that's your last resource, go ahead and use salt. But if you don't have any of those, lemon juice and white wine vinegar can also cure your meat. It just isn't going to be very tasty. Get this open. Don't do that. And you don't need a whole lot of vinegar, but you do need to cover the meat completely. And we're going to leave this to cure for three hours. And in the process, we're going to turn them. So every hour we're going to turn the meat. <coughs> just to make sure that it is sufficiently covered. Never been good with clean up. Crikey. 
This is why I didn't start a cooking show. So I've waited a couple of hours and my meat is now sufficiently marinated in the vinegar. I've turned it as I went. For game meat, we add less salt than we do for beef because it tends to go bitter really quickly. Um, so I haven't added any salt into my spice mix yet, but what I have done, I've put some of my spice mix aside for my game and then I can add salt um, separately for my game. I only just drip dry this. I don't actually pat it dry at all. I like the vinegar to stay on there and then you can just give it a nice rub. The reason why we use the spices and the salt that we do use is um, coriander has actually been used to prevent bacterial growth um, for many, many years. So it does have some antimicrobial properties and so does salt. Now for the rest of the meat. This I'm going to do with a slightly more traditional spice mix. So I've got salt here and I've got spices here. Um, so let's do the beef first. Because I'll add some of the salt into the spices that I ground earlier. I think that's sufficient. And the salt also helps to dry the meat out, um, so it will actually help in the dehydration process. But you also want it to be palatable, so don't add too much salt. Last, I've got one more piece of kudu, and I'm going to add just a little bit of salt to my water, much less than I do for beef. I'm going to add some of my spices in with that. Give it a little bit of Give it a good rub. And it goes in my container. Alright, so what remains is for us to put some meat hooks in the meat so that we can hang them. And uh, this is a good process. You can basically just grab a nice thick piece and put a hook through it. So now all that remains is for me to hang this bolt-on in my bolt-on box wait a couple of days and see what it looks like. So the bolt wasn't traditionally made in a bolt on box, it was just hung out to dry. The reason why we have a box is because we want to keep the cat and the dog out, we want to keep the flies out and we want to ensure that we don't have too much humidity by pushing some air through the box, so we ventilate the box. It's been five days since I've hung this bolt on. And some of these pieces are ready, and some of them can wait a little while longer. But I'll show you the ones that are ready so long. And the way I tell whether they're ready or not is just a little bit of a squish test. Um, I want them to yield a little bit, but not a whole lot. So I can feel how far into the meat it's actually cured and dried up a bit. So I reckon this piece is ready. Um, and different people prefer their biltong at... Um, different stages so some people will have taken their biltong off at about three days and then it's really a wet kind of a biltong right now for the exciting part we get to cut and eat the biltong so I've separated um, the kudu from the beef here and what I've done is I've got one piece that's got my own spice and then I mix together with the salt and one of the safari spice and I've got one piece that's got my own spice and again one of the safari spice which is nice for comparison. Keep this one aside for the moment. At this point you can remove your hook. And then I like my bolt up really thinly sliced but that actually looks perfect. As you have a look at it you can see where the meat has cured. It makes a darker ring um, and that's what we call the bark, is this outer piece that actually has dried and hardened a bit um, and it's got all, got all the spices on and that seals really nicely. This piece is quite a bit drier, also beef, but this is with my own spice mix and I've added quite a bit of chili onto this piece with my biltong, my biltong spice because we do like a bit of chili biltong. Goes really nicely with a bio. Kudu, made with safari spice. And this is quite a thick piece of biltong, so we expect the inside to be quite moist still. And there will definitely be a bit of a gamey taste to it. And usually game does have a slightly different color. And that vinegariness is especially concentrated in the outer part um, of the biltong. Let's taste that one. Mm. 
perfect, perfect full time. If you're wondering how all of this relates to survival and preparedness, remember that preparedness is a skills lab and it requires us to constantly update and maintain our skills in order to ensure that it doesn't matter what situation we end up in, we manage to survive and we manage to take care of our most basic needs. And being able to cure meat, especially in the wilderness, is a survival skill and an improvisation skill that you're definitely going to find useful um, if you're bugging out and you're out there in the wild. So that's it from me on making biltong. Let me know if you've got a cool biltong recipe or if you make your own biltong. Remember to subscribe and share our videos and like them. It gets the content out there to other people. We appreciate you watching. I really love to hear from you guys. I like to hear where you're watching from. So comment down um, in the comments and let me know where you are in the world. And until the next time, live ready.